Hello and welcome to The Grey Cricketer on 7. Happy New Year's Day. It's a massive show given that we weren't around last week because we didn't fancy doing this on Christmas Day, lads. Mm -hmm. Our huge show. India have, in the meantime, regained the Border Gavaskar Trophy, winning in Melbourne 2-1. So we're going to preview the fourth and final test match of the series in the SCG starting in a couple of days. Tom, there's also so much to talk about in terms of the Australian selections, the BBL, oh. New Zealand across a ditch, smashing Sri Lanka over there. Obviously, Smith and Bancroft have also done some interviews. We should talk about that. We're going to be doing our hierarchy of needs because Australian cricket need a lot of things, all before answering your questions using the hashtag AskTGC. My name is Ian Higgins. I'm joined by Sam Perry and Dave Edwards. Boys, welcome. Happy New Year's Day to you. Happy New Year's Day. Here goes. Thanks, Thanks very about much, you. Mate. Yeah. yeah. Tweeted well, out last yeah. night. Yeah. Tweeted out last night, 2018. Mm. You know, you've you've been kind to me. There's mm. been up, there's been ups, there's been downs, mm. some smiles and frowns. Uh, 2019, uh. let's bring it on. Talking to 2018 very like cute. it's an actual human thing. I'm sure a lot of people at home are, you know, enjoying the early start to 2019 mm. and yeah. probably lazing around, just flicking through socials, maybe a bit of a sore head. Mm. Uh, this afternoon, mm. not mm. sure. It's good that you're tuning into the Grey Cricket live mm. on Twitter and a bunch of other things, apparently. Mm. We hope you're yeah, lying on your bed, just yeah. rolling around, just, just thinking, oh. I'm watching a bit of TGC. Yeah. On Googling Twitter weird live. things, yeah, so second tab. up lots of Wikipedia pages. Yeah. There's literally a game of cricket on Channel 7 right now, but you're deciding to watch this yeah. on your phone, trying not to drop your phone on your face. Yeah. Happy New Year's Day to you. And to yours. Let's talk about uh, back in 2018, some cricket being played. Yes. Mm. Let's talk about the uh, the MCG test match there. Oh, uh, India, far too good uh, on what was just an incredible MCG wicket. You know, it was a real result <laughs> wicket, that wicket. And, uh, you looked know, good too, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. It looked good. Just aesthetically pleasing wicket. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they deserved it, India. Too clinical in every way. Too stoic with the bat. Too mm. relentless. Mm. Fast bowling trio. Too good for us. I fear for the fourth test in Sydney, boys. Like mm. I, I yeah. don't see where Australia gets around Boomer, Kohli, mm. Pajara and Co. I, I, don't, I don't see it. Well, yeah. I also just don't see where these runs are going to come from. Yeah. Mm. The, the biggest concern for me is the lack of runs. Mm. Um, where are we going to pull these runs from? Yeah. Mm. That, I mean, that, it's obviously a huge problem. I found with like just Boomer. Let's just talk about Boomer, the, the Jasper Boomer. Well, I love it. My favourite thing to talk about. I just, like, he's just never in. You're mm. never in against him. I mean, mm. the amount of times Kawaj has got in, probably mm. well, he's Australia's best batsman available at the moment. Mm. Don't know if you guys caught this couple mm. of guys unavailable at the moment, but yeah, but like, you just, you just never, you're just never in against him. And he's just yeah. always at you, yeah. and his arm's weird, and he's like, he follows through between his legs, and it's all, it's all unusual well, and unorthodox. Like, it is, it is unorthodox, and yeah. we were too focused on that, aren't we? The yeah. stuttery indoor nets run up mm. and <laughs> all this kind of other stuff around. And maybe we should just accept that he's actually good, and you don't have to look good to be good. Because mm. he looks like he's, uh, I think Gideon Haig said this, who is a colleague who's appearing on Channel 7 quite yeah. a lot. It looks like he's like fake galloping a horse mm. as, he's, as he's running into bowl. And we don't mm. deal with yeah. unorthodoxy well here in, in Australia, Australia, do we? No. We sort of watch it and we go, oh, that looks a bit weird. That's not going to work. Mm. Oh, it's working. Oh, what mm. do we do now? I liked uh, also a friend of the show, Trent Copeland, another colleague. None yeah. of these people talk to us, by the way. No. They're no. Just, I mean, they're even especially seen. not in the press box. No. We just want a little seven pin. That's all we want. Yeah. Then we can go home, pin. maybe forever. But, uh, but he was doing a comparison with like your textbook, Josh Hazelwood. You know, it was a split yeah. screen. And we're <laughs> like, like, Hayeswood's like, he's good. Yeah. That is a textbook action, but Boomer yeah. is weird. But Boomer is somehow better. It doesn't make any but sense. But I mean, if he, was an, if he was an Australian cricketer, he would have gone to a high-performance clinic at the age of 13. <laughs> yes. And all these idiosyncrasies would have been ironed out of him. He'd be bowling like Brett Lee, yeah. you know, running in, presenting mm. the seam mm. upright, mm. high arm action, follow mm. through. The aim would be to bowl 155 kilometres an hour. Mm. Mm. Would he have even made that. test cricket? He probably would just be playing fourth grade somewhere because his action would have been so ironed out that it would have lost all of its spirit, yeah. you know? And we you need to start spirit. laughing at me because I held up a mallet. Yes, I was wondering if you're knocking in your bat a bit later or something. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to actually, yeah. Yeah. Mm. incidentally. Yeah. Um, well, we said before that Australia cannot score runs. We do have a hierarchy of needs coming up in a moment's time, which we will uh, explain to the people mm. out there, the people of Australia uh, who are watching this on their phone right now. Uh, how Australia needs to score some runs. But let's yeah. talk about uh, Pat Cummins. We threw a little poll yeah, out yes, there on the yes. interwebs before. And we said, is Pat Cummins captaincy material? Mm. Is he captaincy material, boys? Oh, I'd, I'd go beyond that, he goes, <laughs> right. realistically. I, I mean, I think he can solve the deep-seated culture wars that are occurring in Australia cool. right now. Forget captain, forget even prime minister, mm. which has been suggested. I think he is our mm. saviour to get into the trench warfare mm. of the PC and anti-PC culture <laughs> wars and actually lift us all out because yeah. he's a fast bowler which is very anti-PC, but he also can do a cryptic crossword in 30 minutes. Wow. Do you know what I mean? He's, yeah. he's really so he straddling yeah. both sides. You know, my it, contention, he goes in pairs, is maybe he's too good looking to be a captain. Yeah. I think mm. yes. better captains are grizzled. Like Alan mm. Border, mm -hmm. um, he was born at the age, he was 37 when he was born. He mm. came out looking <laughs> like that. Um, he was actually two years below me at school, <laughs> which is funny. Yeah. Right. But um, I think you kind of have to be grizzled. Like I don't want to see Pat Cummins agonising over field 
placements and getting crow's feet prematurely. I don't mm. want him to age. I want him to be young forever. Well, it's he's, yeah. yeah, he's some of those Gillette commercials where he's just baby yeah. face skin, those beautiful blue eyes. You know, you could swim in those eyes. Mm. Great well. relationship with his dad on that ad as well. Yeah. Paying homage to his dad. He's yeah. a new age man. Mm. What can't he do? None of it feels right. You know, like mm. on Instagram, you're saying a lot of people who are like doing their top nine. There's like a little, it's like squares of like their nine best moments of the year. I mean, Pat Cummins wouldn't have nine. I mean, he's doing, he's doing crosswords in 30 minutes. He's yep. doing runs yep. in the last over of the day in Adelaide. Mm. He's, t he's taking, he's taking wickets. He's scoring runs. He's mm. probably taking some catches, mm. you know, relationship with dad. I mean, uh, I don't trust it. R realistically, I, I don't think he should be captain. Just <laughs> to, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I, I don't. Like, I mm. think that uh, he's mm. just doing his job mm. very, very well. Let him be exceptional at that job. Let's, let's fix the rest. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, he also... He has to miss the odd mm. game, Cummins. He missed the UAE tour yeah. uh, to get him fresh for this. I mean, captains have to play every game. Yes, he has a history true. of injury that's as true. well. I'm trying to saying a lot of things that make sense. Yeah, yes. sensible centre. I'm trying yes. to get some sensible uh, centrism yes. going here. Well, he's also a bowler, and mm. we don't we don't pick bowls. As well, and, that, no, and that's unorthodox. And, we, and the reason we don't do it is because we've never done it. Yeah. Mm. So why would you do something you'd never do? Well, yeah, I mean, Imran Khan was a bowler. He was he was captain. Right. Was is that right? Mm. Courtney Walsh. Yep. Pretty decent. Richie Benno. Richie mm. Benno. He was the last was one, wasn't he? Possibly. Yeah, was him. Mm. Was Macron, Waka Yunus. Let's mm. just name bowlers who are captains. Well, let's this just is the entire yeah, show. Yeah. Mm. Well, let's move on to uh, what's happening in a couple of days, which is the Sydney test. Oh, yes. yes. Um, and there's been one major change. Mm. Marcus, or Manus, should I say, mm. Labushaknir. Mm. Mm. I think many people probably thought it was Marcus initially mm. as well, but we're learning he's a sort of South African born guy, mm. Manus, a real jack of all trades type, come in to fill the gaping hole of runs that we mm. need, which makes a lot of sense. <laughs> So you think it's a left field choice from from Justin Langer and and the and the lads to bring in to bring in this bloke? It's not left field because he played in the UAE. Like mm. when he got run out the bowlers end in mm. the UAE, there where he was just he was on thirty odd mm, that right. didn't back up. I mean that's that's almost a life ban immediately mm. from the Australian cricket team. And years gone by, struggling, but now he's been picked as like a yep. leg spinner because he rolled them out okay. But like mm. jack of all trades, oh. he's like he's just he just does a bit. But I just Probably love good throw down. I just love these quirky call ups. Yeah. Like I love it when yeah, you get novelty. A, something like this, a bit of novelty factor. I mean Justin Langer just always keeps us guessing, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's like being in the early stages of a relationship and there's a lot of courting. You're trying to understand what yeah. the person's saying. Yeah. You're reading into their texts. Yeah. Mm, I don't know what to think. It's like, and it's kind of like, okay, so just trying to extend that without any preparation here whatsoever. Like you've brought yeah. the new date over yeah. and like, you're, like mm -hmm. mum, you're not sure about them, but mum goes, and I I like him. Yeah, he I presents like well. He gave yeah. a firm handshake to dad. He looked yeah. him in the eye, and that's really important. And that's minus. Well, that would depend on your relationship with your parents. Mm. Correct. Because if you, it depends Correct. on if you trust them and their judgment. Mm. And we don't have enough time in the show to go into that. Mm. He, he's a catch 22 selection, minus, isn't he? Oh, like right, he, yeah. he, mm. he robs Peter runs to mm. pay Paul. Protecting, pr protecting quicks from injury. Right, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and like, yes. what, what, what's the point of protecting quicks from injury if mm. we're not going to win anyway if they're fit? Uh, I'm, I'm not a fan mm. of okay. the selection, but I like so, him. Mm. Are you a fan of Aaron Finch being retained? It does look at the moment like he might be pushed down the order. There might be a bit of a reshuffle at the top of the order. Thoughts, feelings on that? To me, it's just getting blokes in the team. Just get the boys in the right. team. It's yeah. jobs for the boys. They like the him. Australian mm. cricket team. Yeah. You know, like I don't know what Matt Renshaw, Joe Burns, these guys. You know. Uh, you know um, Hanscom, mm. Maxwell. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what these guys have done, but obviously not enough in the bloke department. Maybe no. not in the circuit. Maybe getting in the front seat of an Uber. I'll buy you a beer, but then not buying a beer. Yeah, no. no. There's you know a lot I mean? of guys that Langer likes, isn't there? Like, it's, and it's kind of like, that way, it's yeah. kind of like <laughs> yeah. I'll mould you. He's saying, he's mm. like, I'll get yeah. Guinness. I like having a beer with you, and I'll mould you into the fighting yeah. Anzac kind get of cricketer under my that wing I was. And I'll, yeah. yeah, I'll put, bring you into my yeah. arms. And then Finch mm. comes out um, and uh, Boomer bowls to him, and it doesn't matter because the technique is not there. I mean, Pez, it is ultimately the same collection of guys, and you said off air before that it is a little bit like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic, a little bit like rearranging the furniture in your terrible share house mm -hmm. to get a bit better chi. Yes. Is there going to be any positive outcomes by doing this? Can we mm. can we win with this collection of players? I, I I don't see it. I just think that like it's like changing clubs. You think that you've got new gear on, you've got mm. like a new ground and some mm. new friends, but you still play against the same players. You still they still expose the same technical flaws that you have on that twenty two <laughs> yards mm. of uh, of wicket of soil. And we talk a lot about the MCG and SCG soil. Like and Aaron Finch soil. can <laughs> bat at the top of the order. He can bat six. Boomer is still going to come on and challenge that off stump. Yep. Doesn't matter. This reminds me like just the experimentation, just like it was a couple of years ago, we went for like the Nick Maddinson, Callum Ferguson, you know, yeah, just yeah. like, okay, just sweeping changes. Yep, tumultuous we picked, times. We picked, we, we picked Hanscom, we brought him back in, yeah. two tests, dropped Mitch Marsh, Gone. one test. Mitch Marsh and Hanscom made a play again for a couple of years now. <sighs> Mate, yeah, just, really, we really love sweet. recycling the Marshes, don't mm. we? Yeah. They're the most, the greenest players Australia has. So yeah. now it's the Labo Shane project. Mm. Yeah. Sounds like a band from the 80s. 
<laughs> do you think you know there's, there's a lot of stuff boys about like uh boys about the mm. like the cupboard <laughs> being bare you yeah. know the cupboard's bare there's no you know mm. and lang has come out today mm. or yesterday and said like oh, you know you'd hate to be a selector at the moment i wouldn't I hate would. to be a selector it'd be awesome mm. but like uh <laughs> like the cupboard's not bare there's heaps of people in there it's just that what's, people in the what's been stacked in the cupboard and used in the ingredients is incorrect the people who hate the cupboard have designed the cupboard yeah. put the I actual feel. you know the, the actual seasoning in there mm. harissa Moroccan spices, mm. you know, tarragon, <laughs> or, oregano, yeah, oregano. But you've yes. got to know how Cracked to apply pepper. it. There are people yeah. in there, you know. So Alex they're just Karras putting these there. herbs and spices on yeah. this meal. They don't know how to use it, and they don't know what they're cooking. You, you don't know, put it on pasta, right? Yeah, you know when you move house and you've got like you just move the spices with you. That's like that's Mitch Marsh, isn't it? Like, we yeah. just moved. We had time in there, and now we've moved him. We've moved house. We've moved location, hmm. and I've lost this analogy some time him. ago. That's right. Uh, and speaking of word salads, he goes okay. and and just generally losing the run of things as we're doing. Um, yes. Let's talk about the huge pieces of public communication that came out last week, which was uh, our former captain, Steve Smith and Cameron Bancroft, both kind of commencing their public rehabilitation. Mm. Um, David Warner stayed silent throughout. Dignified um, silence. A dignified silence. I thought Warner started um, probably that week as the arch villain and maybe mm. ended it as um, more dignified than both. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like, you don't, I mean, well, I think we're the only people talking about the big winners from Sandpaper Gate, and all of a sudden, yes. like, Warner, you know, whilst, you know, being heavily, heavily punished and in no way a winner, is somehow now a winner, just by yeah. doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. But he's like, we all know he's got, he's got the grenade. Yes. Yeah. He's got all the intel. Yeah. He's like, he's Barack Obama, it, he has all the information. I don't <laughs> know what that analogy is. But if again, he presses the button, I mean, it's mutually assured destruction. It's yeah, mad. It's mad. Yeah. We're, we're talking about, you know, geopolitics here. Mm. Well, wouldn't Cricket Australia be in their right mind to like, just, like, string him along for a long enough period? Yep. Like, just like, oh, yeah, we'll pick you but then not, but then just like, do you, right. do you know what I mean? So is that another relationship analogy? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How does, I mean, there's all this conjecture about whether Warner will be brought back, but we then mm. talk about this grenade. I mean, mm. wouldn't it go precisely <laughs> the other way? I mean, we've got a vacuum of captaincy at the mm. moment. Steve Smith's gone for two years. I, I suppose Warner is as well, but wouldn't you kind of mm. lift that ban and go, no, 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 David, mm. you will be captain because you can basically kind of assure our, all, uh, all of our destruction mm. if... Um, you know, we don't give you what you want. No. Well, I mean, it, th th there was interviews as well, and, and let's talk about the Bancroft interview. Yes. I know you both had strong feelings, particularly on what he was wearing. Very strong. During the interview. Yeah, well, he offended stylists everywhere. Mm. I mean, GQ's come out recently and said that, you know, wearing a tank type is, tank top, part of me, is, you know, a sartorial minefield. Mm. Um, Bancroft decided to turn up with mm. tank top on, mm. playing the spiritual role um, a bit of bum fluff there as well, which has got rid of, to be fair to him, mm. uh, and pr proceeded to produce a, a, an amazing word salad. Well, there were spiritual undertones to it. I mean, one of the mm. recurring motifs was to have faith and embrace uncertainty. Mm. And he used that several times throughout his letter to myself, mm. um, which was one of the greatest things I've ever read on the internet in 2018. Mm. Um, are you, have you written a letter to yourself as a cricketer? Well, I... I <laughs> would you? <laughs> and what would have been it? Well, I've written many. Um, mm. You used to keep frank. a diary, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I did keep a diary actually. Yeah. But you know, I, I take Ricky Ponting's advice, which he offered on the BBL the other night. Mm. I was like, Cam, you know, if you want to write a letter to yourself, keep it to yourself. <laughs> Put it in the drawer. Read it yeah. later. Why did it have to go on TV? Yeah, he needs to push the feelings deep down inside, like all men need to. Just yes. push those feelings deep down inside. Really Let them all point. blow up, like Dave yeah. Warner may or may not do in the coming. And that's why men die weeks. earlier than women. <laughs> exactly. By the way, Steve Smith, yeah, he sold some mobile phones and started uh, rehabilitating his own image. Mm. Uh, mm. Should we talk about the BBL? Yeah, great to see you, Steve back in work, obviously. The BBL, yeah. uh, it's, it's happening. It's contextless. There's a match every day. There's a match, there's a match every right now. Yeah. So you're watching this for yeah. some reason. Don't flip, don't flip no, over. Don't flip over. Mm. Don't leave us. Don't, mm. Please don't, please don't leave <laughs> please. me again. Um, all right, so the, I mean, the Hurricanes are undefeated at the moment. The Scorchers episode are struggling. Four. <laughs> the four episodes. Yeah, the I'll difficult fourth from. album. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, Hurricanes are on top. Scorchers yeah. struggling. Yes. Do we, we need to pick up the bat flip. Yeah, we, mm. I mean, we talked about the naming convention of it, roofs or flats. Mm, uh, right. so, so, but, but we saw the other day that they flipped it and it landed on the side. <sighs> Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of going from bad to worse for the bat flip, I'd imagine. Do you think they'll retain it? Oh, it's going all right, isn't it? The kids okay, love so it. Disagreement. The kids love it. Mm. I think they love it. Mm. I think the novelty of it, I, I don't know what I was expecting. Like when the mm. bat flip was, it was like, there was outrage from certain yeah. camps, you know, anyone over the age of 15. Yes. And now it's like, it, then it just happens, you're like, oh. I mean, I okay, thought the well, world was going to end, but yeah, it didn't. Yes. Yeah. My life moved, moved on. on. Today, uh, in the game that's happening right now, Chris Lynn did the bat flip and he threw it like so high, like the bat went out of camera, Good went right. out of shot. Good. And then Moses, captain of the Sixers, called uh, Hills 
And then yep. Andy Ma said it's actually called Roofs, and he goes, no, that's only in Melbourne that it happens, everyone. So, oh. Moses, oh. you're welcome onto our show at any time. Mm. 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 I mean, like this is just all thing. This is a, this is our deep diving conversation mm. with Big Bash. This is what's happening with the BBL. So <laughs> let's move on. Okay, mm. there is other cricket going on around the globe. Yes. I don't know if you've known. I haven't been watching it, but apparently there's some other cricket happening elsewhere outside of Australia. Um, yeah. South my Africa, notes here say, yeah. South Africa, according to my notes, South yeah. Africa are playing Pakistan. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I think South Africa took care of Pakistan pretty yeah. easily. They they did. They uh, they unearth another tall quick. Mm. Yeah. Um, they just keep doing that. Yeah. So it's the land of the quick. Yeah, you know, everyone's good. At, like everyone's got depth, except mm. for us. Yeah. Like, like you look at like Pretty Sure. You know, like mm. in India have hardly played Ashwin. Pretty mm. Sure they picked two new openers for this mm. uh, for this uh, this Melbourne Test match. Yep. Yeah, Agarwal then uh, Bahari. Bahari, thank mm. you. Yes. Who like never opened a Test match cricket before. Mm. Still won the Test match easily. Mm. Like we're we're struggling to get like an eleven out at the yeah. moment. Whereas yeah. like. You know, Safiga roll at this guy, just like six from Dubu. Yeah. Dale Stain, obviously. Uh, became the highest yes. uh, test wicket taker for South Africa. Um, you know, what a what a guy Dale Stain is. Oh, beautiful that guy. Baller. He's a skater as well, which yeah. would be rare, but he's is just he? such a good player yeah. that it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. He's a skater. Yeah. He's a skater. He's skateboards. skateboards. Yeah. yeah. That seems a occupational hazard for a guy. Mm. Like, bowling's bad That's why enough. That's so cool. Well, Pat yeah. Howard, if he was in charge of the South African high performance team, would mm. automatically rule him out from doing that. Yes. That's just a hazard. Do you think yeah. Boomer would have played under Pat Howard? I would, I would highly doubt he'd get through um, the, the, the screening process. Um, he's a bit of a rig He's got a, quite, a, quite a strong rig, like an ox. Mm. I think I saw like a weird selfie that he took, a shirtless selfie. I was on the dark web. Yeah. Um, and I saw a photo of him taking a self, you know, shirtless selfie in a bathroom. New Zealand also you can't destroyed... Do with that. Um, no, 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 I, I thought it was a good, good, good line. Uh, New Zealand destroyed Sri Lanka. Uh, Tom Latham scored a whole bunch of yes. runs. Yep. Trent Bolt killed uh, them mm. as well. So they'll come out to Australia and um, assage that problem by beating us. Um, Trent Bolt just quickly has a face that would look wonderful on the cover of Girlfriend magazine. He just oh. looks like a teen idol, fresh-faced, fast bowler. We need some of those. I was in Girlfriend magazine once, <laughs> genuinely. We haven't pre-prepared this. Oh, yeah. I, think I think you remember telling me that. Yeah, it was a segment about um, how you yeah. react to girls wearing shirts with particular slogans on them. Anyway, uh, I had hair, on the street. I had hair at that uh, hair at that time. Mm. We are going to discuss the major um, issue in Australian cricket under the prism or the pyramid of the grey cricketer's hierarchy of needs, named of course after Maslow's famous hierarchy of needs, yep. describing what humans actually need to survive. What Australia needs to survive is runs. We're going to focus it specifically mm. on runs. A disclaimer, it's a bit absurd. Um, not everything is we it? say is um, going to be true or nor do we actually mean it. But um, for the outraged people out there, please just take it in that spirit if you can. If not, retweet us and boost our profile. Um, <laughs> let's kick it off. There's nine mm. things that we think Australian cricket needs to score yep. runs. We're going to start nine things. with number nine. I'll kick it off, okay? And it's a little bit, um, this one's a bit tame. We need a, a stimulus package to upskill curators. Mm. Now, we understand in Australian cricket that we only score runs when the wicket suits us, so I'm, mm. su I'm suggesting that we create wickets like Perth and ensure that there's sort of a government stimulus package to make sure that curators understand how to create those wickets. Um, also, perhaps a little bit of education about climate change, some climate change policy stuff, mm. because as we know, climate change is, is a Chinese of, hoax. Was creating a whole bunch of oh, like, okay. uneven wickets. Mm. Uh, so if we can get our curators understanding the uh, actual effects of climate change on wickets, then perhaps uh, we can create the wickets we need, doctor wickets, to score the runs that we need. That's number nine. Pez, uh, to that end, uh, I need, uh, well, I need, mm, <laughs> Australia need needs a private funding of a high-speed rail project right. now mm. so at the moment uh, elon musk is uh, speculating about some high-speed rail which could get you from sydney to canberra in about 14 minutes yep. now there's obviously been huge conjecture about some wickets around the country i'm talking about Mel melbourne specifically mm, sorry, Mel. uh, yep and uh and you know with with like high-speed rail we could get the perth wicket we could get the adelaide wicket any anywhere around the country you mm. like in the space of 14 minutes because it's a borderless society isn't it so you can yes. transfer pictures you know we don't need States anymore. Mm. You know, I was going to talk about the, you know, the, we, the eradication of state politics in general, but maybe mm. that's for next week. Mm. Federalisation of politics, yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, Ricky Ponting, our colleague, um, hello Ricky, uh, he spoke about actually transporting the Adelaide wicket to Melbourne, didn't yes. he, on, on the he back did. of a truck, yep. going via the Great Ocean Road, perhaps a ticker tape parade. <laughs> high speed rail would make this even easier, right? If we wanted mm. the Perth wicket, the high speed rail would just get it from Perth to Melbourne mm. or wherever else it needed to go, and well, uh, Elon Musk country. is the saviour. Yep. Well, that's just a, the, the solution to all our problems. Now, I've got another one here, lads. Um, very important. Uh, we should adopt a dollar a run policy mm. for the Ashes. So, mm. 
we've all played village and grade cricket. Um, those who have would be familiar with the dollar a run policy, mm. Um, mm. usually board uh, accommodation mm. involved in that, mm. um, flights and accommodation. Um, but I think it would be really incentivise our Australian mm. cricketers to perform better, mm. uh, particularly if you're only getting one dollar every run. Yes. Um, we could even stack that incentivisation by, you know, maybe a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar bonus if they hit a hundred. Yes. So you could only get ninety nine dollars if mm. you get out for ninety nine. Yeah. If you hit a hundred, and we need hundreds. Yeah. yeah. Two hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollar bonus. Mm. I Wouldn't think that be good, good to like see like hundreds meaning something again? Wouldn't the nation mm. be able to get behind an Aaron Finch when he's on ninety nine? You think, well, you know, Aaron's looking a bit thin at the moment. He mm. hasn't eaten in a while. He needs this. Or he's, he's gonna behind on his mortgage repayments. Yep. Exactly. Mm. And if he gets this, he can clear some of that debt. You're gonna see a few incentives <laughs> like this coming up. Uh, this yep. next one should be recognisable to everyone. Um, every child should be issued a stump, golf ball, mm. and a piece of rusty corrugated iron yes. uh, in order to improve their batting mm. technique. This of course is derived from what Don Bradman used to do and there's going to be some more Don Bradman references yep. down the track as a warning but uh, wouldn't that be nice it's kind of it kind of akin to um, you know Bob Hawke's No Child Shall Live in Poverty you know Australia shouldn't live mm. in rum poverty Kevin Rudd yeah. every kid gets a laptop every kid gets a laptop in 2007 every kid gets a stump golf ball and a piece of corrugated iron to train um, mm. more stimulus sort of stuff surprise hasn't come over earlier I mean the mm. greatest batsman of all time used this mm. you know a piece of corrugated iron a stump and a golf ball average 99.94 Mm. Mm. No one's ever tried to do that. No one's ever tried either. to do it. Well, I mean, to that end, I mean, this obviously goes without saying, but what Australia right need, right need, they need right now is runs. Mm. They need runs, and who better than Donald Bradman? So mm. Australia need to exhume Bradman mm. and then uncryogenically freeze Bradman yeah. uh, to bring him back to life. <laughs> yeah. uh, to I think John Howard did that in 2001. Yes. Mm. Cryogenically froze Bradman. A, a noted cricket tragic. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and a fan of science. Yeah. A big fan of the Liberal Party has always been a big fan of science. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And so, so can I just ask, just to extend this, what mm. do we do once the Don rejoins us mm. uh, in life? Is it in a kind of advisory role? Is he taking Greg Chappell's job? What's the Are we just staring at his you know, mm -hmm. lifeless body and, yeah. and wondering how good we could have been under mm -hmm. his regime? I just think Australia just need Bradman. I just think yeah. in any capacity, yeah. I, think, I think if he's around the joint, yep. You know, I don't know just what the joint is. Just around him, boys. Just, just Bradman gets yeah, around get the around joint. Mm. Zoom Bradman. Okay. Mm. Um, maybe this is controversial, maybe not. Um, but the next point we have here um, is, and bear with me, uh, electromagnetic shock therapy. Mm. Mm. Um, always, always an interesting subject. Um, mm. But I believe, and, and we're all in agreement here, mm. that a new centre of excellence should be established yes. um, where participants are subject to a range of tests, yes. um, including shock therapy. Yeah. How do you hit runs? Without it, I mean, it, it it would be a great way to kind of like it's like the carrot and the stick, mm. isn't it? Well, one one We're thing that Australian cricket has Australian lost, cricket. our batsmen, and I mean batsmen mm. because this doesn't apply to our women cricketers. They've lost that gluttony mm. for runs. They're not gluttons anymore. You know, they're feasting, they're subsisting on thirties, twenties, thirties, forties. The previous generations, they were hungry. They were starving horses. You know, when they went out there. <laughs> yeah. When they went out there to bat, they needed to be fed, and they fed, and they, they were gluttons for runs. So we're saying that hmm. let's build a new centre of excellence, let's make it more about converting 30s to 100s, and let's use shock therapy. Yeah. If you so get to 30 and you think you're going to get out, bang, shock. So we're talking about centre wicket practices, yeah. and we've got guys from the 90s like Jamie Siddons, Jamie mm. Cox, Brad Hodge, mm. Mm. friend of the show. I mean, guys who have yeah. been there, done that, mm. being gluttons for runs, mm. and they're charged with administering the shock therapy, mm. um, and that will ultimately make people hit hundreds. It's, it's going to happen. Perfect. Very simple, and, okay. we, and we totally mean it. Uh, number three, uh, and this is starting to get controversial, but it's not like it hasn't been done before. Yeah. We're advocating a state-sponsored uh, doping program. Yes, Stay right. with us. This is something that's been adopted by mm. uh, Olympic mm. nations that we should not name mm. um, over the past few decades. Mm. And what we're talking about is, um, and I believe he goes, you said this off air, it's injecting the <laughs> eyeball. I believe yeah, well, uh, to what, see better. What they're going to do is they're going to inject the eyeball to expand the pupils, therefore yep. be able to see the ball better because that's how science works. Yep. Um, you know, you won't you won't mention Russia, but I will. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's that's what they did, and look at their swimmers. Mm. Good point. Huge eyeballs. Mm. Okay, well, to that end, I mean, before we said exhume Bradman uh, mm. and uncryogenically freeze him, this is uh, this is the number two one. This is a uh, selective breeding program. Mm. So what Australia need to do is they yep. need to they need to put their the genes of all Australia's greatest of athletes yep. together to make run scorers. Yep. Mm. And I'm thinking like, who better than say Don Bradman yep. and you know, Winks. Yep. yep. You know, Winks -y. You've got Doesn't to have a girl in there. You've got to combine yep. Bradman's DNA with Winks before mm. Australia will score a run again. Yeah. Think like in a big like washing machine kind big of thing, machine. swirling it around. Yeah. I don't know how you yeah, we're apply not the DNA. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about, this is in a laboratory. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah that's right. So we're not, talking, we're not advocating people 
procreating, but we're saying get the best, um, get the best Australian batsmen ever, yeah. and um, the best female cricketers as well, yeah. and get the best sports people. So let's like, throw, throw Kathy Freeman's four hundred race mm, in there. Yes. Greg Norman at a certain mm. period, yes. you know, not in the majors. Pat Rafter's serve volley. Pat Rafter's serve volley. Right. Yes. Get the DNA of that. Philip Pousas's first serve. Mm. That's right. You know, we're not doctors, yeah. but yeah. that's what Australia needs. Get it going and winks. We'll, uh, we'll wrap it up, guys. Yeah. Um, and, and this one is yeah. very, very important and could negate everything that we've already said to date. Yes. But what Australian cricket desperately needs in order to uh, accumulate more runs, um, and here it is, a 17-year-old wunderkind to pin our entire hopes and dreams on. Yeah. That would probably fix everything. Well, it's probably the most absurd mm. idea yeah. of the lot or the least yeah. likely no, we're dreaming, to say. But, we? you know, wouldn't it be nice to wake up one morning and just see a kid come through to just essentially... Um, absolve all of the structural and systemic issues that are currently there in Australian mm. cricket because he's just a glutton for runs. And save a bit of coin in the process. I mean, we've, we've probably come up with about $50 billion worth of ideas. Yes. Um, but if someone just comes, you know, out of regional New South Wales and solves our problems, that'd be great. Children are the future, and all we need is a 17 year old to pin all of our hopes and dreams on in a cricketing sense and maybe a political sense as well. Hashtag RCGC before we wrap up the show, yes. boys. We've got a couple minutes left. People are still tuning in via the Twitter machine. So I'm going to kick this one off from uh, Frank Quito. Mm. Uh, who says, thoughts right. on using a synthetic pitch and a two-piece ball for next year's Boxing Day test? Yep. Interesting question, Frank Guido. Yep. Thoughts, lads? I'm a big fan of uh, just a, a generally applying what, you know, a st like Australian mm. favourable conditions to anything. Yes. So we need something mm. for the MCG. If, yep. if, you, if you told me, like with the bat flip, if you told me it's going to be synthetic wicket, we're using two-piece balls, perhaps one side's been frozen, uh, etc. We're talking about freezing a lot. Yep. I'll go with it. I'll get up, oh, I'll watch it. Anything that's going to work. I mean, I even go a step further and suggest we use a 143 gram ball and maybe we retire at 30. Mm. And then we come back in, you know, you've hit your 30, you're feeling good, and that's how we're going to hit runs. Mm. I think what would have helped the Australia's batsman would be facing Jasper Bloomer on a synthetic pitch with a two-piece ball. Yeah. But then we would have scored some runs. Yeah. Mm. Good point. Mm. Uh, the next one comes in from Michael Cooney. Great to hear from you, Michael. Republic Now. Uh, Ask TGC, do we think... Bancroft wore a singlet in his interview because he mm. doesn't own any collars that aren't sponsored. Uh, yes, I think yeah. that. I think that wholeheartedly. Mm. I mean, I, and I know that whenever I'm seeking forgiveness, the way I do it is to stare down the camera while wearing a piping hot singlet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do that now if I can. The could. brand, that is. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah the brand. Mm. I don't know what that what that reference is about his um, collars being sponsored. That um, mm. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll run with it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, that's good TV. <laughs> Final question uh, is from Nathan Bennett. Uh, Asked TGC, uh, do you think Clive Rose's salad, and for those who um, have not familiar with the term, salad is a strange metaphor for a head uh, for hair, is worse than that time Mum tried to sneak Brussels sprouts into Christmas lunch? So is Clive Rose's salad worse than when Mum tried to sneak Brussels sprouts into Christmas lunch? A specific question mm. from Nathan Very Bennett. Very specific question. I presume Nathan does not care for his Brussels sprouts or about yeah. his mum's feelings, yeah. Nathan. And, and I actually care for both. I think Clive Rose is entitled to do with his yeah. hair what he wishes. Absolutely. There's not enough unorthodoxy in Australian cricket or Australia generally. I'm a guy without hair. If I had hair like that, <laughs> I'd definitely do what Clive Rose does. And yeah, I like Brussels sprouts too. And his hair kind of reminds me of the guy from Counting Crows, and they were one of the great bands of the 90s, so I'm all for it. Counting Crows, one of the great bands of the 90s. That's the great cricketer on 7 this week. We'll be back on uh, next Tuesday. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows what's going to happen? Ian Higgins signing off with Sam Perry and Dave Edwards. We'll see you next week.